welcome to uh, Command Central and uh, Cruise Control. Just lean back in my Lazy Boy recliner here and uh, let the bike do the work. Okay, well good morning to you all. It is uh, Tuesday, I don't remember the date. Uh, 20 somethingth. It is day nine of the Scooter Cannonball Run. Uh, our hotel is there, we just left. There's the sunrise over the mountains. Beautiful, looks really nice. And uh, we're fueling up, getting ready for a 400 and something odd mile day. And look at these gas prices here in Utah. Ouch, man. Base unleaded. And 85, what is 85? We don't have 85 down in the south. The lowest we have is 87. Anyway, uh, we're going to load up with some of this and uh, start our day. It's going to be a long, slow run on uh, a lot of hills. Uh, not a lot of twisties from what I understand. Not a lot of huge elevation gains, but it's just a lot of ups, downs, ups, downs, which is what the cub really hates. <laughs> Man, we're just perpetually stuck in third gear yesterday. We could not get out of third gear for 20 plus minutes at a time, just pinned open in third gear, just letting it run about 40 miles an hour. So fortunately, I think today is going to be more of that. <laughs> this can is all sucked in. Mine's uh, deflated too, Adrian. Oh my. It's, it's so tight that I can slide it off. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. See if I can put a little more fuel in there. It's not going to take as much fuel as it used to because it's scrunched. Okay, good enough. Let's get this going. It's only a couple minutes. We're debating on, you know, our check-ins and times and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to be stuck on the road for so long, we're not making any time. Okay, 393 a gallon, holy monkey. That one's full. At 0.65 gallons. That one's full and dripping. And that one's pretty close to full. Oh, let's give it a penny. No, let's give it five pennies. 75. So that's what I've been averaging daily is around eight to ten dollars in fuel for this trip. I'm not getting the kind of fuel economy norm we normally do because it is just me flat out. Full tilt. Don't even take it off the throttle stop, just let it go. And up these hills is just crushing our mileage, but I'm still doing near hundred miles to the gallon. Okay, I'm ready for some more pain and torture. Some more self-inflicted sadomasochist nonsense that has no purpose other than bragging rights. Oh, that's better. Now let's keep rotating it up. Oh, no, oh, it's gonna get too tight later. Okay, that'll do. Okay then, mileage recording, get on the road. Okay, it's all recorded. I'm gonna tally the fuel stats, figure out how much it costs per day. Figuring the uh, overall mileage is gonna be a little tricky because, or miles per gallon per fill will be tricky because we're doing staggered sets. But anyway, I'll figure it out. So we're gonna go back and check in again. Why not? Why not? Here we go. Right, get down. Can he make, ooh, can he make the U-turn in tight quarters with the trailer? I'm scrubbing the trailer, I can feel it. The bike turns a tighter radius than the trailer does, so you end up kind of dragging the trailer around. <sighs> Hotel. Just right here in front of the sign, yeah. So we're on the road, 
Adrian and I were just uh, discussing this is our earliest start, we think. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, getting out, crack of dawn. Hopefully that'll set a better tone for the day as far as progress goes. It's going to be a very hot day, from what we understand. And uh, it's just you know, rolling hills and plains and stuff. Slowly losing altitude. Uh, from the, the Rockies here, but a lot of ups and downs and ups and downs, so you know, our overall gain is uh, still going to be significant as far as feet climbed, uh, but our net result at the end of the day is going to be much lower, closer to sea level. <clears throat> but as far as getting an early start, you know, we're, we're noticing that the experienced riders that have done the cannonball are getting out very early probably for a lot of reasons one is to cover as much of the day as possible uh, and get out of heat uh, obviously to get in early at the destination but we're wondering if part of it isn't to avoid getting mired down in other people's problems <laughs> it's good to help but uh, when you've got to cover these kind of miles you know, especially in the heat if you get stuck in somebody else's problems early in the morning because they weren't prepared or they have mechanical issues or whatever that weren't addressed, then you are almost dooming yourself to uh, a miserable day and dooming yourself to failure. Uh, it's the unfortunate truth. So, kind of noticing that all the experienced ones are getting out super early before anybody else is up <laughs> so they don't get stuck in other problems. I get it. I get it. I like to help, but you know, sometimes that uh, that help isn't really uh, beneficial in some cases. You, know, you help the spider that's constantly uh, dangling by the drain, and it's been doing that for forever, and then suddenly you intervene, and the next day the spider's dead. So, okay, I didn't help. Let them sort it out. Anyway, this is pretty. Very pretty sunrise. It's actually behind us over there, but low clouds and pastel colors and the uh, Rocky Mountain Range there as the backdrop. It's This is a fairly slow but efficient way to turn a rounded motorcycle tire into a cylinder. <laughs> Squaring it off. in third gear. Can't get past 45. Tucky, 
only got to like 67 there. That's not even close to our top speed, but it felt fast. Welcome to uh, Command Central and uh, Cruise Control. Just lean back in my Lazy Boy recliner here and uh, let the bike do the work. Those are some big mounds of dirt. Peeling off in the distance, just absolutely laser straight all the way to the horizon. Put in these mountains. So that was about a 1,500 foot climb right there. 71.54 was the peak. Okay, everybody, welcome back to uh, our Tuesday afternoon in progress. We're blasting through the Nevada Basin. I don't think you really call this a desert, but it's the middle of friggin' nowhere between the mountains. Uh, we've been summiting left and right, just nonstop. Summit, 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 summit. 7,200, 7,700, 6,800, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> it's, it's kicking our butts in these cubs. So we can only go about 34 miles an hour up on most of the hills. So, <clears throat> anyway, this is more flat land here. We're trying to make some time into the wind at 50 miles an hour. And we've got about 39 miles to our next checkpoint. Uh, all the vibration from my windscreen bouncing around killed my GoPro 8, apparently, because it refuses to turn on now. Fresh battery, no good. I plug it into power, no good. So, anyway. I've got a uh, GoPro Plus warranty on all that stuff, so I guess that one's going back for a replacement. Oh, check out that view. It's pretty cool. So check out that view. That's pretty cool. I wonder what we're headed into here. Lake of some kind.
are we looking at out there? Is that water? Hmm. Huh. street. Okay, everybody. Welcome to uh, Sand Mountain, Nevada. We kept coming over these rises, coming down, and seeing the white something. Couldn't figure out if it was salt or what. And then, of course, our checkpoint here is salt, or sorry, Sand Mountain. And that's a whole lot bigger than it looks. It's crazy. It's just a big ass sand mountain. Everything else around here is, uh, is rock and dirt, and that's sand. And it's all sand all through here. Anyway, Adrian has already taken off. We filled up. I'm gonna go catch him. Maybe, hopefully. Holy hell, it's hot. It's uh, well over 100 degrees here. I haven't checked the official temperature, but it's, uh, it's hot. <laughs> Real hot. I don't wanna sit here for any length of time. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Done with gravel. Damn it, I hate gravel. Had enough gravel for this trip. It'll take me a while to get moving. Okay. Big rig just passed, and now I'm gonna get out in it. And man, these narrow little cup tires hate gravel. Okay, I'm rolling. I don't know how far out you are, if you can still hear me. Nope, he just faded. So he must be well over a mile out. Oh, it felt good to get moving there for a second, but now it just feels like a blast furnace. Oh, it's hot out here. This is kind of what I was expecting this morning, but the temperatures uh, in the basin out there, the Great Basin, were very, very good. Uh, like high 60s, low 70s until even 1230. Uh, it was surprising. I had my over jacket on the whole time. Because the air was actually a little bit nippy, but uh, this is uh, quite the contrast to it. So yeah, from that hill way back there, we're just seeing white everywhere, I'm trying to figure out what was white, why is it white? I don't know. Sand, must be quartz sand, so I don't know. Get it. Hunker down, try to make up some distance, because I bet he's hauling butt in traffic. The only thing I can do on this to pick up speed is to punch up, shrink myself as much as possible, and try to get my helmet kind of in line with the, the brake of the windscreen here. And that lets me pick up four or five miles an hour, but I'm still fighting the wind. Pretty stiff wind out here today. Serious crosswinds out here. There's a 40 mile an hour crosswind just out of nowhere. This is all that white sand everywhere. Sand, sand, sand. Yeah, people are writing words with rocks. Awesome. See them. 2017 CK. You gotta watch the road. They're kind of falling apart, but you can see words. That's pretty cool. I wonder what they're using to write with. Black rocks of some kind. Cool. Graffiti. Oh, it's on this side, too. I'm going to watch the road. Pale Arovia. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hey, at least it's natural graffiti. Okay, so this, uh, I would say, is definitely the desert. You got the basin, you got the, the foothills, you got desert, you got whatever. But this, to me, is desert. It's sand. Sand equals desert, right? I've never been here before. I've been through Nevada just going to California before, but from the southern route, not in this area. This is all new to me. Oh, this wind is brutal. 
Am I recording or not? This camera is not liking the heat. It's acting funny. We're going out for dinner. This is day nine. Uh, we stripped all of our stuff. We pulled our trailers off. We're starting to do the initial bike remediation and checkups and whatnot. Adrian's tire is shot. It's totally bald and it's starting to show through to the underlayment uh, rubber layer near the cords. So it's gotta go tonight. Uh, he lost his outer stainless steel uh, pipe from the uh, exhaust. It's messed up. He has no directional skills. <laughs> what the f are we doing? I'm getting off the road before we get run over. <laughs> what are we doing, man? This guy's so lost. What is he Canadian or something? What what's the name of the restaurant? Let me let me route for everybody, please. What's the name of the restaurant? What's the name? You don't know? Oh God! Wait! What's the name of the restaurant? Um, uh, Reds. I keep losing my signal. Reds what? Reds Bar and Grill. Reds Bar and Grill. I'm going to be the backup navigator. You can lead, actually. <laughs> it's 0.2 miles. We're done. It's on the mount. It's getting charged. You guys should hear the conversation in my headset. I'm driving. It's supposed to be 0.2 miles. We'll see about that. Turn left. <laughs> he said he keeps losing his signal, but uh, we think he's directionally challenged. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, exhaust problems. These uh, Takigawa pea shooter exhausts are crap. Absolute crap. Next right onto something drive. Something drive, something drive. It's the next right. I'm taking it. Six hundred feet. Turn right. I think we're doing a U-turn. We're doing a U-turn. That's it. He sent us the wrong way. So now I'm fixing the problem. Yep. Yep. We're doing a U-turn. <laughs> he sent us the wrong way. I hope everybody's following. Anyway. So, cameras are overheating, tires are gone, exhausts are gone, Scooter Cannonball is eating everything. Uh, we're, ah, God, that's rough. Uh, we're about to go eat food, so, next right, so is it on the right? Reds, holy crap, I made it on the first try. Well, Google made it on the first try. Thank you, Google. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we're going to survey the damage, do a bunch of maintenance tonight, and this is our spot right here. Minus... Okay, I got to hear it, because you're missing the outer to your baffle. That's uh, for cherry sauce. When did it start, do you know? Well, you obviously lost your tip. So everybody, if I'm still recording, look at this. The outer stainless steel tip is gone. It doesn't look like mine. This is a narrower tip than mine. So this section, the stainless steel on mine is bent up. That inner pipe right there is what still exists on his. <laughs> that's all that's left. So these Takigawa exhausts are not surviving high temp, high heat, long run. 10,000 miles. We haven't even made 10,000 miles. We're 6,500 miles, so or 68, whatever. Anyway, we're uh, we're going to eat.